Let's get ready to rumble! This episode is brought to you by Fairdesk, a crypto derivatives trading platform founded by six former Binance execs and three former Morgan Stanley architects. Fairdesk is a company focused on building a platform that enables traders to profit from both rising and falling markets. Sign up today and CB will credit you up to $600 in trading funds. For more information, visit Fairdesk.com. Link in the description below. Double from stacking Toshis, yeah, this my two Satoshis, Toshis, this my two Satoshis, Toshis. Tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis, yeah. this my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis, who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis, yeah, this my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis, tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis, yeah. Yeah, that's where you need to get the real news at. Stop messing with them lanes out there. CBTV. Let me out of here. Pop. Fuck it. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay. Ready? Right. Fucking thing sucks! We'll do it live. Okay. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis with yours truly, Crypto Blood. Now, let's give a round of applause to all the banks out there. Yeah, thanks. Not looking too good, ladies and gents. Not looking too good and making crypto look even better. Couldn't be a better time, right? Ladies and gents, thank you for joining. Make sure you guys do what you need to do. Hit that thumbs up. We got a, a, a person that I haven't seen in a while. He said too long. Red River Post in the building. Thanks for tuning in, man. Long time. I mean, Red River goes back to the early days of CBTV, 2017, when I started, I believe. We will talk about First Republic Bank. I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of it. Just stay around because I got my two Satoshis on this. I got to definitely get some things off my chest. And I want you guys to understand this is not, in my opinion, the move we've been we've been waiting for in cryptos. I'm going to explain why in this episode. So you want to stay around for that. But before we do that gotta do this smack yourself smack yourself ladies and gents smack yourself fuck it just smack yourself don't listen to bill o'reilly smack yourself <laughs> smack that thumbs up in the chat room please right now i need more thumbs up to help cbtv out it is greatly appreciated all right so if you guys are looking for somewhere to trade i have a partnership with fairdesk Yes, I am offering up to $35,000 in deposit rewards. That is basically bonuses that are added to your account and go against your losses up to 60% of your loss. So every time you have a loss, it uses the balance from your deposit reward up to 60%. Not up to, it's, it is 60% of that uh, if you have that money available. And it goes against your trading fees as well. So Check it out. You don't even have to be part of Bloodalytics to enjoy it. Link in the in the description below if you want to take advantage of this. I'll leave that there for you to check it out. All right. If you do want to trade with Bloodalytics and take advantage of these wild swings in the markets like we had today, I saw we broke below the trend line and said, hey, we got to watch it. I'm not fully bearish, but this is a bearish move. And then lo and behold, this morning, we hear news that First Republic is adios, ladies and gents. Adios. A round of applause for that. Again, we're going to get into the nitty gritty on that here in this episode. So stay tuned to the end as we wrap up my two Satoshis with that headline. But again, check out Bloodalytics because uh, if you're doing it with Fairdesk, I am able to trade your account for you. Uh, the signals are automatically triggered. I set up Python script on the server and got all that tied up that's all linked up with fairdesk okay so if you're interested check it out three month 
six month and 12 month subscriptions you can trade manually i do have some manual traders as well and there's no additional cost to auto trade with me six month and 12 month subscriptions do get a 50 percent discount if you're depositing at least a thousand dollars into your fair desk account so how you do that is sign up with the link in the description of this video then you want to deposit your money then you want to send me your uid number and then i'm going to send you back a 50 percent off promo code for the six month and 12 month subscriptions for blood analytics other things you got to do for me rumble with me in the jungle my two satoshis drop a link to that in the description of this video and hopefully in the chat room right now so greatly appreciate it if you guys follow me there i am most active though on twitter i'm most active on twitter so come holler at me on twitter crypto blood underscore 10,700 followers right now, almost 11,000. So help me get to 11,000 followers, guys. Muchly appreciate it if we can get that milestone. I got a shout out. Even though they're not the highest on the scoreboard, Litecoin up 3.9%. Shout out to Shan Balu. Yes, I did mention his tweet the other day regarding Litecoin and a significant milestone it made and how it really didn't get enough attention. So if you missed that, go back and check out that video. I go into detail on why Litecoin is still the right coin. You may be you may be shocked at the future, guys. Litecoin, Dogecoin, who you just don't know. Spread your love around. Spread your love around. Don't think you know which coin is the the one that's going to be the end all be all. It just might, and statistically. It probably won't be Bitcoin. I'm just saying, guys. I'm just saying. I love Bitcoin too. But hey, it may not be Bitcoin. That is the de facto cryptocurrency of the industry. We'll have to see how it all shakes out. But I'll tell you one thing. Litecoin definitely surpassed Bitcoin in one metric. Again, go check that out if you missed it. Now, word of the day. Mm, this is a good one. Word of the day is harbinger. I'm sure you've heard of that word. Harbinger. Yes, it is something that foreshadows a future event, something that gives an anticipatory sign of what is to come. So what is the harbinger that you see in the market? Is it this First Republic Bank thing? Is this a harbinger of things to come? I think so. I definitely think so. Let me know how you guys use that word in today's episode. Harbinger of bad news? Yeah, for the uh, traditional system. I think so. <clears throat> I think so. Harbinger of bad news definitely for the Fed because they didn't f*** up now. Oh, they didn't f*** up now, guys, for sure. So what we have going on here, I'm going to try to get this right. Bada boom, bada bing. This is the trend line that the trajectory downward we were on okay where are we right now we're right there and we kind of lost some steam so if we do not breach above this region right here if we don't breach above there and more importantly above here which is going to be at thirty thousand, just let's just round it up and say thirty one thousand dollar bitcoin if we can't breach above there then it is a false pump or breakout okay and one way you can kind of monitor that is to look at the stock market stock market didn't really budge so you know if we would have seen a move up in crypto and a move down in the equity markets i would have said this is a true move for bitcoin but i'm not even seeing that yet bloodalytics though boy we got the whole move guys I mean, we were toggling back and forth down here Monday and over the weekend. But going into Monday evening, we went long on Bitcoin and haven't looked back since. <laughs> so we caught the whole wave. We closed that long up here. We're now short, giving you a little free trade here. So it's great that we kind of, you know, no guarantees. But we went short at a very good area because we went short right in this region in this trend line area. So let's see what happens.
but we definitely did uh, make a, a nice gain there from Monday's long on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Kind of the same thing. We toggled back and forth, but we did go long permanently on that long that we are still in on Monday night, if you want to call it that, depending on where you are. We're still in that long and we're still in our BNB long from Friday. We went long on BNB on Friday, guys. Killing it, killing it. Bloodalytics.com for more information if you're into it. Out of watcher guru, first Republican bank expected to be seized by U.S. government. It's going down, guys. I'm pretty sure. And it's so funny because first Republic, it's not your average bank for your average Joe. You know, it's not for the average American. First Republic was a bank that was for the 1% or higher. Okay. And you know that because guess what Wall Street did maybe about a month ago? They actually got together and started depositing money in First Republic to try to save it. So they kind of did a private bailout by moving funds over to First Republic Bank. And now we have a situation, guys, where it's not enough. It's not enough. So it looks like First Republic will be going down. It's drops. Oh, my God. Drastically. 90% over the last couple of days, I think. Says here, First Republic is expected to be seized by the U.S. government. A report by Fox Business Network says, according to Fox's Charles Gasparino, bankers working with First Republic say that they expect eventual government receivership for the ailing bank. This will come after an exhaustive private sector solution such as asset sales and finding a buyer, both of which appear difficult. You know why? Because money is drying up. Liquidity is drying up in the system. First Republic lost more than 40% of its deposits, approximately $72 billion in the first quarter of this year. Its shares sank nearly 50% as of the end of Tuesday. This is according to a Monday announcement. So it's not looking good. They're definitely going to go down and be uh, another SVB. But what's interesting is, and I wanted to explain this to you guys. Yes, we saw a pop in crypto off of this news. But you know what I'm, this is my assessment of these types of moves that we're seeing in the markets. I don't think there are many new players in the crypto markets. When I say new players, I mean retail players. OK, and institutional players, there aren't many new ones, definitely not retail purchasers. I don't think there are many new players in the market. So these pops are off of uh, speculators that are already in the markets. They have maybe dry powder to deploy back into the system, the crypto ecosystem. But this is not a move from a panic from TradFi, guys. OK, a move from TradFi into crypto ladies and gents, looks like a 60% move in one day for Bitcoin, a 100% move in one day for Bitcoin, okay? $500 billion worth of new capital coming into the crypto game in one day. This is retail and commercial players that are already in the game, okay? This is what this move is. This is not the beginning of a new rally, in my opinion. Because what you guys have to realize here, and I'm just going to put this into perspective. I did a search to see who and what country has the biggest amount of crypto traders. And it is the United States. 16% of Americans trade crypto. Now, that number is probably a little lower now. This is as of uh, May 21. Out of chain analysis. Ironically enough, Thailand appears to have the highest per capita, though, which is interesting. But I say all that to say United States is still the number one player in crypto. So if this was a, a systematic panic and the banking system was collapsing right now today, it's not. It's a slow motion train wreck, ladies and gents. I'm just saying it is. It is collapsing, but it, you know, it, it, it didn't. Ha it's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to see hyperinflation, all that stuff that, you know, the fear porners like to do. But I say all that to say, 
this pump, guys, is not the pump that we're looking for. The pump we are looking for will come after the dump. And I think we're in the midst of another financial crisis like 08. It's just starting. So when I say that, you still, in my opinion, have the opportunity to buy these cryptos at a very steep discount. So you can be patient. You can be patient. You're going to get Bitcoin much lower. Because when the shit hits the fan, guys, it is going to take Bitcoin and cryptos with it. Because it is the highest speculative and lowest liquidity market in the game. So those two characteristics by themselves are not great for a panic, for a liquidity crisis. So don't get too excited. Take advantage of it. Fade the rally out. That's what we're doing. We made the move all the way up. Okay, we, we bought. But Binance went long last week, Friday. So we were good. Went long on Monday with Bitcoin. So we were good. Went long on Ethereum Tuesday morning. So we were good. Buy and sell and be proactive here. Be aggressive. But I don't think this is the move that is going to be the big move. You're going to see the big move down first before you see the big move up. It's coming, but just not yet. It's coming when you feel uncomfortable buying. That is when you know it's time to buy. That is when you know the bottom is in, when you're like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm panicking here. I can't believe what's going on. This one, guys, this is the first article really want to get into. I reported on this Bitcoin white paper being secretly put in the images of pretty much all the Apple operating systems, I think since like 2017 or 18, something like that. They have since though, guys, removed the Bitcoin white paper from Apple computers following the belated discovery. Hmm. 2018. The document will not be a part of the next update. Why would you do that? It doesn't hurt anything. And this, to me, definitely lets me know that it was probably a rogue employee that embedded the Bitcoin white paper in the image that were, was to go out. It was, it was hidden deep down and wasn't even named anything that you would think it should have been to discover it. So very interesting. Very interesting. Just wanted to let you guys know Apple is taking that out. These guys aren't are about freedom. These guys aren't about self-sovereign wealth at all. They want control, even the corporations. And many will say that maybe the government and the corporations are in bed with each other. And I think Elon Musk and Tahibi with the Twitter files pretty much exposed that. Made that a true statement. It's definitely not about self-sovereign wealth, independence, none of that. Censorship resistant, none of that. Not at all. Not at all. Out of you today, XRP suddenly plunges to zero. <laughs> Round of applause for this. Uh, there you go. This is a harbinger for you, ladies and gents. Harbinger. <laughs> XRP suddenly plunges to zero dollars on BitTrue Exchange. They release an official statement. Let's see what the statement says here. They said on April 26th, we experienced a technical glitch in our system, which led to certain orders for XRP versus USDT being placed with incorrect prices and quantities. BitTrue says it will be taking the following actions to rectify the matter. First, all positions made between that time period will be reversed and the margin amount will be returned to the user. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, no, no. I'll tell you why the shit went to a zero because XRP is going to go to zero. I'm just saying. I'm just trolling. I'm just trolling, guys. I don't think XRP is going to zero, but XRP definitely <laughs> it ain't things aren't looking great. I got my crystal ball back from out of the shop. It ain't looking great for XRP, ladies and gents. But what is looking great is the XRP ledger. Ripple, the company, looks good. Never said anything about Ripple. I'm just saying XRP, the token. Ripple announces grants giveaway to XRP ledger developers. So the XRPL, 
can be promising guys i think has some uh some promise there for sure because uh you know opening up grants and allowing and developing an ecosystem for developers in my opinion will allow you xrp lovers to continue on you know at that point it's not a banker's coin or a banker's blockchain it's whatever the developers want to develop on there and they, no hate towards xrpl i just did want to let you guys know if you, any of you are developers out there check it out next one on the radar guys is kind of a public service announcement to be honest with you you guys should look into this one if you have created any wallets with trust wallet browsers their browser extension you want to definitely move all your shit off of there and the reason is c generation of trust wallet was flawed the total entropy was only 32 bits <laughs> <laughs> only 32 bits are you kidding me they've created a file containing all possible seeds fortunately uh ledger don john discovered the vulnerability very quickly and likely avoided one of the biggest hacks in crypto ecosystem i don't know how if you created a wallet prior to that how would uh, him catching this be of any benefit for you wouldn't you have to create new wallets i would think the ledger Don John has recently discovered a critical vulnerability in the browser extension, allowing an attacker to steal all the assets of any wallet created with this extension without any user interaction. So just be careful. But hey, it's just like anything else. You know, you have a name like Trust Wallet. They've had issues in the past, actually. They've had a, a few issues in the past with security. So I don't trust Trust Wallet. I'm just saying, ladies and gents, round of applause. For that double entendre. Next article, Binance.us says no deal to Voyager. Oh, my God. Just when they got the green light, they turned it red. Not a surprise to me. And, you know, I opined on this from my Twitter account. But I can't remember who actually sent it to me. But I said this probably has to do with Binance linking up with Russia. I just talked about this on a previous episode of my two Satoshis. Go back and check that out. I said this is definitely giving the middle finger to the US by allowing Russian users to interact with Binance. And I think they're allowing deposits and withdrawals and debits and stuff. So this is crazy. Not surprised, but definitely crazy. Voyager Digital has confirmed Binance has shut down a deal to buy the bankrupt crypto lenders assets for 1.3 billion hmm so i heard that there's still light at the end of the tunnel for voyager i think under their bankruptcy laws or whatever they're able to still return funds to users or whatever i don't know but this is sad us is really really messing up they are really really messing up guys for sure next one CFTC commissioner says there is no immediate path forward for Binance. Of course not. And again, this is probably why Binance said, you know what? F it. We're not even going to try. They may shut up. I think they're going to shut down Binance.us. Let me know in the comments below. One for they are going to shut down Binance.us. They meaning Binance and CZ. They're just going to exit the U.S. We already see Coinbase making moves to the bermuda so i think they are de-risking as well coinbase that is and i just don't see it being advantageous for anybody to operate in the united states of america land of the free right round of applause for land of the free <laughs> the commissioner said we've been in continual conversation with binance to give them an opportunity to explain that conduct and to help us find a path forward but no path has been found and i think they're just going to give the u.s the middle finger i'm pretty sure i'm pretty positive as i'm putting a one in there too I, no pun intended there one in there too i think binance.us will be shutting down soon i really do I, I just don't see it happening especially with them linking up with 
Russia, again, allowing those users or uh, citizens to operate on Binance as they should. You know, the days of the U.S. setting the law and that being the law are over. Commissioner goes on to say crypto companies should distance themselves from anonymity tech. And again, this goes with my thesis, guys, that you will have to at some point break the law to fully leverage and exercise your rights to privacy within the crypto realm. They've already set the stage with Tornado Cash. When they did that, when they put Tornado Cash on the OFAC terrorist list, sanctions list, a piece of code. By the way, one of the programmers will be released finally in Switzerland. A round of applause to that. I did report on that last week. But when they did that, guys, the precedent was set. It was over. Done data. They could do and put anything or ban anything if they could ban a piece of code. So to me, that was the harbinger. There you go. Another round of blood. Harbinger. <laughs> For things to come within the United States on banning, clamping down on privacy. They don't want it. So CFTC is saying, stay away. So this is all, again, setting up the rails for regulation on cryptos and pretty much will make it illegal for you to have privacy with your wealth, which is crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Again, shout out, round of applause to Land of the Free. Shot, a shot. So that's my two Satoshi for today, ladies and gents. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe and click that bell. To receive more videos like this. Again, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are the My Two Satoshi live streams. I've still got to work on this sound. Popping sound. I know. I'm working on it. Got to fix that next. I'm out of here. Holla. <laughs> This my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis Who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis Yeah, this my two Satoshis, Toshis. this my two this my Satoshis two Tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis yeah. This my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis Who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis Yeah, this my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis Tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis Yeah, yeah, that's where you need to get the real news at Stop messing with them lanes out there CBTV. Let me out of here. Pop. <laughs> Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Okay. Ready? Right. Fucking thing sucks. We'll do it live. Okay.